Hi folks, Dr. B. Today I want to talk to you about muscles of the lower extremities, or in other words, the pelvic girdle, the hip girdle, and the legs. So let's jump straight in and let's start with a set of muscles that's involved in moving the thigh. And one of the first muscles that you might think of are the ones you know as the glutes. So the glutes, in colloquial terms, are basically the muscles that form your buttocks. It's a trio of muscles, the gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the gluteus minimus. So maximus, biggest, medius, middle, minimus, smallest. And that tells you a little bit about their size. And the word gluteal or glutes actually comes from the word for buttocks. <laughs> so this is your butt muscles. So just to orient us to these guys, let's go ahead and take a peek at where they are. Let me go ahead and get that up for you. So here you can see them um, in context basically. And the primary muscles that you can see externally are the gluteus maximus and right above them and a little under them is the gluteus medius and uh, deepest is the gluteus minimus only visible once the other muscles are cut away or in another view here the gluteus maximus the gluteus medi medius here and here and the gluteus minimus so let's go ahead and take a peek at these and we'll go ahead and start from the inside and work our way out so let's start with the gluteus minimus. So here is a shot of Get Body Smart, which as you know, I really like their visuals. And to get to the gluteus minimus, we're gonna need to strip some of the external muscles of the leg away. So let's take this gluteus maximus off and the gluteus medius off. And here we get to the gluteus minimus, the smallest muscle of the buttocks. So the gluteus minimus abducts and medially rotates the thigh. And this muscle, uh, let me find it real fast. There we go, sorry. My recording software was giving me a little issues. This muscle, gluteus minimus, is, uh, is going to originate. Actually, let's go ahead and get all the way in here. Here we go. So this muscle is gonna originate on the external surface of the ilium. Remember the ilium is this big wing of the hip bone, by the way that we are in a posterior view right now. And then we are going to connect from there over to the insert in the greater trochanter of the femur. So here from this um, lateral or side surface of the ilium and then over to the greater trochanter of the femur. So let's go ahead and put this together on our little skeletal model and take a peek. All right, so here's my little skeleton friend. You can see I'm applying, this is a muscle that's visible both from the posterior and in some degrees this muscle is probably easiest to see from the side, a lateral view. So here we have the muscle connecting to the lateral surface, actually probably a little high there, the lateral surface of the ilium. And then from there, we're gonna come down to the greater trochanter, that's the biggest bump, that external bump of the femur, and connect there. And now we wanna think what's gonna happen when we contract this muscle and shorten it. So remember, you can already probably tell this is a muscle that's going to pull across that hip joint. So it is going to move the thigh and the gluteus minimus is going to, well, you can think if it contracts this way, it's going to abduct the thigh, pull it out to the side. And it's also going to be able to medially rotate the thigh. Now remember, medially means in towards the body. And this is because of the way that it connects. It's able to twist this thigh inwards towards the body. All right, 
So that's our first fellow, and he really does not want to stick here, but that's our general idea. Let's go ahead and get our next guy in play. Oh, fell completely apart immediately. So moving our way out, let's go to the gluteus medius. Let me share my screen. And gluteus medius. Again, we'll start from the outside in. And first we're gonna strip away this gluteus maximus. And here's the gluteus medius. It is, if you remember, sitting right on top of that gluteus minimus. Here it is, gluteus medius. Here we go. So we have the gluteus medius. This muscle is, name means the middle buttocks and it's both in the middle and it's medium sized and it attaches to the lateral surface of the ilium and to the greater trochanter of the femur, just like that gluteus minimus. So let's get him put together and I will be right back. So here we have muscle number two. This medius is pressed into place. Gluteus medius, oh, your arm is doing something weird. Pressed into place over, it should be completely covering, but over that gluteus minimus. And because it has the same attachment sites or very similar attachment sites, this one of course comes higher up that ilium, but because it has very similar attachment sites, we're not surprised that it does the same set of movements. So the gluteus medius is also going to be able to abduct or pull that thigh out to the side and medially rotate. And so it may be a little harder to imagine how it can medially rotate, but if you view from the front, you can see that depending on where we attach to this trochanter, we're gonna be able to pull it a little bit forward, especially when we're, whoops, when we're sitting, we can twist that inwards. So from a sitting position, you could see how that could twist inwards towards this corner of the ilium. So he's lost his thigh muscles or his glutes, but let's move on and put the last one in place. And that's gonna be our gluteus maximus. So let me get that up here for you. Share screen, screen two. And our gluteus maximus is gonna sit right on top of this gluteus medius. So here we go, gluteus maximus. And you can see it right here in green. We strip all the other muscles out from under it and on top of it, this big external butt cheek is the gluteus maximus. So this one attaches a little differently. This one also begins attaching along the, uh, not so much the lateral ilium, but way over here, the more dorsal ilium, but still on that ilium. But you'll notice it comes down along the sacrum and the coccyx, the tailbone. So it comes all the way down along here. So this big broad origin, and then it comes across and it inserts in a long line here, rather than just up on the greater trochanter. So it's going to insert in a bump called the gluteal, gluteal, gluteal tuberosity of the femur. Not surprising that we call that the gluteal tuberosity since it's a bump that is created by the glutes pulling on it. And then it's going to run along the iliotibial tract, sort of a line along here, um, but it will be of a band of tendon called the fascia lata. See if that's um, uh, which is going to run right along here. So fascia lata means basically the sheet of membrane along the side, or the sheet of membrane that is very flat. So let's go ahead and get it in place. All right, so very messily in place back here, but because this muscle. Um, attaches this way. Well, once again, we're going to be able to use it to abduct the thigh, pull it out to the side. So that's not surprising. But because it runs a little longer along this femur, we're also going to uniquely from the other glutes be able to use this muscle to extend the thigh. So when the thigh is flexed, we can pull 
with that glute and extend the thigh, which is one of the reasons when you're climbing stairs and extending your thighs over and over, you're gonna feel that burn in your gluteus maximus as you extend like that, the thigh. So it's gonna help you stand up, and take big tall steps. All right, so those are our three glutes. I'm gonna take those off now. That Plato is slowly merging together. And let's move along the thigh, uh, or rather along uh, our list of muscles that are involved in moving the thigh uh, to a few more important ones. So next I wanna talk about a muscle called the piriformis. And piriformis means pear-formed or pear-shaped. So this is a pear-shaped muscle that is also involved in moving the thigh and it's so it's going to be in a similar area. Let me share my screen. And let's once again strip some muscles away. Here's the glutes and under here right near that gluteus medius we find our piriformis. Go a little deeper. Yep so right under there here's our piriformis. Uh, it doesn't look super pear shaped to me but apparently when they were naming them they thought that looked a little bit like a pear. So that is our pear-shaped muscle. And let's look at it uh, in a few different views. So here we have a uh, posterior, I almost called it anterior, a posterior view of the thigh. And you can see that we have the gluteus maximus cut away the gluteus medius cutaway, and here deepest is the gluteus minimus. And again, right kind of near that gluteus minimus and under that gluteus medius, we have right here the piriformis. Oops, not this one, this one here. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and highlight that for you really fast. So this is the piriformis right here. All right, so Let's take one more look at it. This is a front view, an anterior view of the body. And here you can see a different angle of how the piriformis connects by coming across here. So from the back of the femur and tucking through to sort of the front edge of the sacrum. So what are our actual attachments points here for the piriformis? It comes from the anterior lateral surface of the sacrum. So what does that mean? Anterior, antero in the front, lateral on the side. So the front side of the sacrum, you can see that here. And then it comes over and around to the greater trochanter of the femur. So if I look at this here, let's see, stop share. So from the anterior lateral of the sacrum and then over and around to the greater trochanter. So from a side view, we're going to come from this edge here and we're going to come over here. So let me get that on there for you. All right, so now that we have this fellow on here, you can actually start to make a guess at what it's going to be able to do. And this muscle is pulling from the trochanter back towards the spine. And so this is indeed going to laterally rotate the thigh, twist it outwards. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's keep going. Piriformis is in place. Now let's look at a couple others. So for the next muscle I wanna talk about, let's back up and provide a little bit of context because we're gonna talk about something called the tensor fascia lata or latte, which is basically the tensor, the stretcher or tensor of the fascia lata, which is, as we mentioned before, fascia is a sheet of membrane and lata means it's along the side. So, 
Fascia is any sheet or band of fibrous tissue lying deep to the skin. So not your actual skin, but deeper in. And so it tends to kind of line or separate structures within the body when we talk about things like the posterior and anterior compartments of the arm or different parts of the legs, these are generally surrounded by fascia. So there's multiple types, but the one we're talking about right now is the fascia lata, which is a deep fascial uh, wrapping around muscles in the thigh. And it's sometimes compared to a a subcutaneous stocking. Basically, it's like if you were wearing tights along your thigh uh, under your skin. That's the fascia lata. And it kind of, let's see, actually, I have a picture here. So here in green, that is the fascia lata. Uh, so it's literally, it's like a big stocking on your thigh um, under your skin. But one of the really important structures along it is a thickening of the fascia lata that runs all the way along your thigh in a band. And this is called the iliotibial tract of the fascia lata. And we can shorten iliotibial tract to the IT band. So let's take a look at that. So down along your leg, we have here a thickening of that fascia lata that appears as a visible band. Um, running the length of the thigh, and that is the IT band. And so the muscle we're talking about right now is the tensor fascia lata, the tensor of the fascia lata that specifically pulls on this IT band. So here's our tensor fascia lata, and let's go ahead and take a look at it on our diagrams. Um, or actually, let's first take a look at it on Get Body Smart. So here we have an anterior view of the thigh, and the tensor fascia lata is gonna be right on the side and connecting to this band that runs all the way down the length of the side. So if we take some of these other muscles away, um, here's the tensor fascia lata, and here is that IT band. It may be hard to see, it's in white on white, but here it is. And here again, you can see it, tensor fascia lata running all the way along here with this IT band. And one more view, the tensor fascia lata running right here with that IT band. So what does this muscle do? How does it connect? Um, let's go ahead and take a look. Again, the name means the stretcher of the side band. And this muscle originates in the anterior aspect of the iliac crest, so right up here. Um, specifically, this anterior superior iliac spine. So you remember that is that going to be that point at the front of that iliac crest in the front of that ilium of the, the pelvic bone. So here's where we originate and then we're going to come down and we're going to connect into the IT band, the iliotibial tract of the fascia lata. So let's go ahead and get that in place. I'll go ahead and model it with that IT band and let's get it in place on our skeleton. So he may fall apart on me here. He's struggling. Oh no, he fell apart. <laughs> Give me one sec. All right, don't mind his missing leg. We're gonna get that back later. So coming here from this front spine of the iliac, uh, of the ilium, sorry, uh, down to the side, whoops, there he goes, the side of the femur, we can now start envisioning what's gonna happen when we pull this muscle and shorten it. And probably right away, you can guess this is going to abduct the thigh. We're gonna be able to pull that thigh out to the side. But the other thing it does, because this is a little bit in front and this is a little bit to the side, we are going to be able to medially rotate that thigh. So now we have the tensor fasciae lata in place. Let's move on to the psoas major. All right, so the psoas major, uh, psoas comes from the word for loin or loin region. So this is the large muscle in the loin region. And this muscle you'll notice is kind of up here on these lumbar vertebrae and then coming down to the femur. So let's go ahead and pull some stuff away. Here we go, here we go. So here's our psoas major. If we look at it on our other figures, grab that for you. Uh, here's the psoas major here. 
And one more figure. Here's the psoas major here. So as you can see, this muscle uh, originates from the lumbar vertebrae L1 to L5. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, also includes some of the, uh, or the last thoracic vertebrae. So the lower back, and then it's going to come over to not the greater trochanter, but the lesser trochanter of the femur. And if you remember our femur anatomy, you might remember, you might remember that from the front, we have the head of the femur, the greater trochanter. The lesser trochanter is almost not visible. You can see it here in the back. So we are literally going to be coming from the spine kind of almost around a little bit to grab this lesser trochanter. So let's go ahead and get that put together on our skeleton man. All right, so here you can see we're coming from those lumbar vertebrae, kind of along here. We're wrapping around the front of the pelvis and then tucking under a little bit to get to that lesser trochanter. So we're really doing a little bit of winding here with this muscle. And one thing to point out is that we keep talking about muscles that move the thigh, but remember that if we hold the thigh or the trunk, in, if we hold the thigh in position, we can move the trunk. If we hold the trunk in position, we can move the thigh. So this muscle in particular is sometimes going to be moving the thigh, but other times we're going to use it to move this upper body. So what does this muscle do? Well, let's think about it. If we pull here like that and shorten, the psoas major is going to flex the thigh. Or if we hold the thigh still, the psoas major is going to, so if the thigh is fixed, we could also use it to bend down and flex the trunk. So if we hold ourselves on this leg, we can use this to flex the thigh. Or if we hold ourselves on this leg, we can use this to bend our trunk. So short version, flexes the thigh, but can also flex the trunk. So here's our psoas major. Now let's look at the iliacus. And we probably have a good guess where this one's going to be because we have the name iliac in it. All right, so here we have the iliacus and sure enough, it's following this ilium and specifically the iliac crest. So it's tucked along this ilium. So let's pull a couple things away. There we go. So here you can really see it's really following the anterior portion of this ilium all along this iliac crest. If we look at this here, you can see right here along that, here's the iliac crest of the hip bone. So here's the iliacus. And one more view. Here's that iliac crest. So that makes this the iliacus. Where does the iliacus sit? Well, the iliacus name literally means relating to the iliac bone or the ilium. Uh, so it's going to sit in what we call the iliac fossa or that basically that ala, that wing of the ilium. And it's going to originate along this iliac crest and actually all the way to the lateral sacrum where it will also connect to that sacral bone. And so from there, it's going to come down and it's going to insert into the lesser trochanter of the femur. So that psoas major comes down from the lumbar vertebrae to insert into that lesser trochanter. This one you'll notice is a little more deep, um, but it comes down and it inserts into the lesser trochanter. So let's go ahead and put that on our skeleton. All right, so here we have the iliacus coming from the sacrum. Well, that's a little high for the sacrum, but sacrum along the iliac crest, down over and inserting, kind of wrapping around and behind to insert into that lesser trochanter right back there. So because of the same insertion point, in the similar origin to the psoas major, this muscle is going to do the exact same thing. That means it's going to be able to flex the thigh when the trunk is held still, or if we hold the thigh still, we can flex the trunk. Awesome. All right. One more important muscle that moves the thigh is the sartorius. 
I really like this muscle because I like the story of its name. So the word sartorial as an adjective refers to relating to clothing. So for example, a fancy phrase you might hear is sartorial splendor, which means someone is dressed up just beautifully. And so you might say, well, why is a muscle on the leg called something related to clothes? Well, this is the tailor's muscle. Um, a tailor being a person who sits and sews clothing. And the reason it's called the tailor's muscle is because this muscle is really important for sitting cross-legged. And tailors would sit cross-legged while they sewed, and so it was a muscle that tailors would often get both strong and potentially injure. So the tailor's muscle, the sartorial splendor muscle, is, we already have a big guess, what it's going to do. Let's look at where it's located. Here in green we have the sartorius and you'll notice it kind of wraps around the front of the thigh to that medial side of the knee. So pulling some of these other guys away. Oops, too far. <laughs> Here you can see that sartorius wrapping around across the front of the thigh to the side of the knee. Looking at it on a different diagram, here it is wrapping from the point of that iliac crest around the front of the thigh towards the knee. And let's talk about specifically where it originates and inserts. It originates from the anterior, superior iliac spine. Remember that's gonna be at the front end of that iliac crest. And it's going to wrap around and it's gonna insert into the medial, the inside side, the medial aspect of the proximal tibia. So we're not even going on to the femur anymore. We're getting all the way down to the tibia, which is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and build this muscle in. It's going to look a little weird since it's not wrapping around all these other muscles, which would give it a little more shape. Let's go ahead and build it onto our skeleton and see if we can figure out what it's going to do. So I don't trust this one to hold up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into place while you guys are watching. We're gonna come from this anterior in the front, superior iliac spine, and we're gonna come down and around and we're gonna insert into the tibia. So let's get this guy on here and come around here to the tibia. Oh, he's definitely not gonna stay in place, but Let's go ahead and try to visualize what this guy is gonna do. So if this shortens, we are going to be able to flex the thigh. We are going to be able to abduct the thigh by pulling this corner out this way. And we are going to be able to laterally rotate the thigh as we twist out and this muscle becomes a very short, a very short muscle. Ooh, really gonna have to juggle here. A very short muscle to help you sit cross-legged like that. And now it's much shorter when it, and it's getting that cross-legged position in. So this is your sitting cross-legged muscle. This is your tailor's muscle. This is your sartorial muscle. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight muscles we're going to talk about that move the thigh. Let's finish this half of our muscles of the leg by talking about the adductor muscles of the thigh. So obviously these are another set of muscles that move the thigh, but these all are adductors. So we can kind of cluster them all in one big group. And adductor means they're going to help pull the thigh inwards and together, which is going to help assist in stabilizing your posture as you stand and keep these legs from sliding out from underneath you as your weight comes down. So here's our adductor muscles of the thigh. Let's take a peek at these. So the first three adductor muscles I want to talk about are all literally called adductors and they're part of another trio of muscles in the thigh. So just like we have the gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus, 
we have the adductor magnus, meaning big. That's the sort of pink one in back here. The adductor longus, because it's sort of long and thin. And the adductor brevis, brevis means brief or short. So the shortest, smallest adductor. So these stacked, layered adductor magnus in the back, then adductor longus, and then adductor brevis a little above and on top. So let's take a peek at these. And once again, I'm going to work from the inside out. So let's look at the deepest muscle, the adductor magnus. And so to get to that, we're going to need to strip away a lot of the external muscles, including one of the only visible adductors right here. We have the adductor longus. Let's strip a bunch of muscles away. Here you can see the adductor longus and you can begin to see that adductor magnus very deep in there. Here we can see both the adductor longus and the adductor brevis. Strip them all the way away. Here is the adductor magnus, and you can see why it's called magnus, meaning magnificent or big. This is a pretty big, broad muscle that's really helping pull in or abduct, sorry, adduct, adduct this femur and the thigh. So the adductor magnus is going to uh, originate on the ischial ramus. That is a horn of the ischium. So there's sort of a little horn like attachment right here. And it, then it's going to come down around the pubis uh, to the what we call the pubic ramus, also horn. So from the in short terms from the ischium along the pubis. And then it's going to insert all along here. This is called the linea aspera on the upper part of the femur and to the adductor tubercle of the femur. So, down here. So let's go ahead and build this muscle. All right, so that one really did not want to stick to the skeleton at all, which makes sense because it's kind of doing this long attachment. I decided it wasn't necessary. You guys got a pretty good view of it there. So let's go ahead and look at it on a couple other figures real fast. So here is uh, from OpenStax, the set of the adductors, and you can see that big one, the mm -hmm. long one, and the brevis. And one other view. Here again, you can see the adductor magnus, the adductor longus, and the adductor brevis. So let's remember all of these say what they do in their name, they adduct but they do occasionally have some extra stuff they can help with. And the adductor magnus is going to be able to do a little more because it has such a long attachment. So actually I'm gonna show you the skeleton even without the record, uh, sorry, without the muscle attached. So here's my skeleton. And if you remember, the adductor magnus is gonna be running from here all along here. So one thing we're going to be able to do is to extend the thigh. And that means that if the thigh were up here, we could pull, if it would flex, we could pull it back towards this ischium and pubis. And we could pull it, let's look at it from a side view, they're back here. So if the thigh were flexed, they're right here, we could pull back and, and extend that thigh to stand up straight. The adductor magnus is also going to be able to medially rotate the thigh. We can take this and twist it back towards this edge. Again, if we look at it from a side view, bend them a little bit. <laughs> if we look at it from a side view, we're coming back to this attachment here. So if we twist, that is an inwards medial rotation. Ouch, he stabbed me. He's got very sharp ribs. <laughs> All right. Next, the adductor longus and the adductor brevis. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. So once again, looking from the outside in, and we're gonna go, remember that the magnus was deepest, the next deepest is gonna be the brevis, and the most uh, superficial is the longus. So here's the longus, let's strip some of those away. And let's strip this longus right here out of the way. And now we have the adductor brevis, and behind it would be the adductor magnus. 
So by itself, the adductor brevis gets its name because it's little and short. What are the adductor brevis's attachments? It originates from the body of the pubis. So right here, kind of in the front. The inferior ramus and horn of the pubis, so kind of right in this range. And then once again, like the other one, it's going to insert into the linea aspera, but only on the upper part of the femur and above or superficial or perhaps interior to the adductor longus. So there's the adductor longus kind of behind it. Sorry, <laughs> the adductor magnus, and it's also above literally uh, superior to the adductor longus, which you can see is a little down below it. So here, here, and then the magnus all the way along behind. So here's our brevis. What is this brevis going to do when it contracts? It is going to adduct the thigh. And that's about it. It's a little too small to really help out with much else. So if we go to the adductor longus, that's our most superficial. So here you can see it right here. The adductor longus uh, originates from the pubis near the pubic symphysis, that front fibrocartilage joint. And it also inserts into that linea aspera on the upper part of the femur, but specifically under the attachment site, or sorry, the insertion site of the adductor brevis and um, superficial to the adductor magnus. So here's our adductor longus by itself. What's this guy gonna do when it contracts? Well, it's going to be a little bit like the magnus. It is going to be able to adduct. It is gonna be able to medial, medially rotate but it's not going to extend the thigh, it's going to flex the thigh. So let's take a peek at the differences in where they originate and how that creates flexion versus extension. So if we do a close up of this hip structure in 3D, you might recall that the, um, the adductor magnus connects back in here. Sorry, let me get this set up for you. So let's take from a side view and we're gonna see that from the side, the adductor magnus originates a little towards the back of this pelvis structure back here. This hand is in the way. Gotta move your hand, buddy. So turn it from the front. So this is gonna be inferior, and that means that when we pull on the thigh, it's gonna go backwards, and that will extend it. The adductor longus inserts, or sorry, originates up here near the pubic symphysis. So now that, from a side view, is in the front, which is why when we pull that way, we actually flex the thigh. So the adductor longus inserts towards the front of the pelvis and flexes the thigh. The adductor magnus inserts towards the posterior of the pelvis and extends the thigh. The adductor brevis is right in the middle and only adducts. So summarize again, adductor longus adducts, medially rotates and flexes the thigh. Those are our three ones with adductor actually in the name, but we do have two other very important adductors. That's going to be the pectineus and the gracilis. All right, so the next adductor muscle I want to talk about is the pectineus. And this muscle gets its name from the word pectin, which means comb. And this was specifically because the pubic bone, which it attaches to, used to be called the comb bone or the pectin, um, supposedly because it looked a little like an ancient comb. I don't really see it, but I do remember that this is the comb bone and this is the pubic or comb muscle, pectineus. So let's go ahead and strip some of these other guys away including, you'll notice it's running right parallel to that adductor longus. So the pectineus runs parallel to the adductor longus. 
strip those away. And here we have the pectineus. So it uh, originates from the pectineal line of the pubis, basically the sort of front or uh, upper edge. And then it inserts into the lesser trochanter of the femur. So you kind of see it right here. And then along the linea aspera. So remember there's that linea aspera, which a lot of these adductors are inserting, or sorry, yes, inserting into. It's getting close to my dinner time. So the linea aspera, and then all the way down to that um, posterior aspect of the femur. So it's actually kind of coming around to the back of the femur, which is going to be important because since we're pulling from the back, of the femur towards the front of the pelvis, we're going to be able to flex. So let's go ahead and look at this on a different diagram. In this diagram, they've actually put the uh, adductor trio over here, and then this adductor, the pectineus, over here, it basically would be running right up superior and parallel to this adductor longus. So here's the pectineus, and you can really see that it's coming around to the posterior of that femur. And here, if we look at the all of the anterior muscles of the thigh sort of in situ or in position, we can actually find that pectineus by following this pubic bone here. And here is the insertion, sorry, the origin of the pectineus. Here's that adductor longus right next to it. And this one we'll talk about next, this is gonna be the gracilis right on next to that. So let's go ahead and model our pectineus and look at how it creates the movements it creates. So here's my skeleton. And here we're running from the front of that pubis. I've really, really wrapped it around there and around to the posterior of the femur. Oh, it's probably a little high there. There we go. And you can see that first of all, if we pull on this, we'll be able to flex the thigh and we'll also be able to adduct the thigh. Oops, there it goes. So this one does adduction because it's an adductor and flexion of the thigh. So one last adductor to talk about and that's going to be the gracilis. Let's take a peek at that. So here's the gracilis running all down the length of the inner thigh or the medial thigh. So you'll notice we have a few long thin muscles that wrap around that sort of external superficial um, muscular surface of the thigh. We have the tensor fascia lata with the IT band on the lateral side of the thigh. We have the gracilis coming diagonally across the front of the thigh. Sorry, not the gracilis. The sartorius for doing your sitting cross-legged, crumbing, crossing across the front of the thigh, and then the gracilis along the inner thigh. So the word gracilis means slender or thin, like graceful. So it's a very, another one of these slender, thin muscles. And let's pull some of these other guys away. You'll notice it's behind the pectineus, behind the adductor longus, and it's um, also coming right into this um, pubic area. This is the gracilis. So it originates on the inferior or lower ramus or horn of the pubis, the body of the pubis, the ischial ramus, and it's going to come down along the medial part of the thigh and insert into the medial surface of the tibia. So here we have another of the muscles that comes all the way to the tibia. We also talked about that um, sartorius coming across and inserting into the tibia and that IT band coming down. So our long thin muscles coming all the way to the tibia and I bet just by looking at this you have at least one idea that it's going to be able to pull that um, thigh inwards. Um, 
But what else does it do? Let's go ahead and put it onto the skeleton so we can get a better 3D image and um, try to figure out what other things it might be able to do. All right, so here we're gonna come from this tibia, which I'm not gonna try to attach, but we'd be coming from there up to this pubic region. And you can see from a side view, that means we're a little bit towards the front. And that little bit towards the front is gonna be enough to be able to pull on this tibia and pull it upwards towards the front as that shortens. That means we're gonna be able to flex the thigh. And we're also going to be able to twist, medially rotate the thigh. All right, so those are our one, two, three, four, five adductors. And those uh, conclude our muscles that move the thigh, at least in terms of what we're gonna talk about. So next time we will go over the muscles that move the leg, um, in particular the hamstrings, which do flexion, the quadriceps that do extension, and then we'll talk about a number of muscles that move the foot. So I'll see you guys next time.